Hello and welcome to the Isaurus video blog number five. Uh, today we are going to be talking about what makes music heavy um, and we're also going to have a discussion about this which is Pearl Jam 10, the album and general other stuff. We don't have much of a band update because this is actually recorded like three, <coughs> three days after the last last one or something or four days yeah. after the last we're like, we're kind of like buses. Like buses, mm. yeah, we're like buses. <coughs> what do you mean by that? Well, there, there aren't any buses for ages and ages and then two or three at the same time. Okay, yeah. It's a well-known fact. Uh, so, we're going to start by talking about what makes music heavy. And um, this is something that we've kind of discussed a lot. Um, not on the internet. <laughs> So we thought we'd talk about it because it's kind of interesting um, and important to us uh, and generally in music it's important. And I think we have some um, maybe quite different opinions about what makes music heavy to other bands uh, or other people in general. So it's an interesting topic of conversation. So Dave? Yeah, you... well, I think it's possible to have heavy music without it being heavy in a heavy metal sense. Like, you can even have relatively quiet and calm stuff, but it still has a kind of heavy... Um, it's more of a mood or a feeling, I think, is the way we're defining heavy, I think. That's why. I think it's, that it... Yeah, I think it's like, you know, I was thinking about what, what exactly it is, and <clears throat> the way... Because for me, the reason that it's kind of an interesting topic of conversation and what brought it up in, in, our, in my mind and what started us talking about it in the past was uh, the song Electric by yeah, King, King Crimson. Crimson. It's and one it's, of the heaviest moments yeah, in, music in music history. Yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, it is distorted and it is kind of heavy, sort of in the traditional sense, but it's, um, it's not like metal at all. Yeah. It's just big, powerful and groovy and yes and it's it's the juxtaposition between the part before it has this little quiet you know i time. i think that it's something to do with because the thing is the point that that we're making i suppose is that you know like that that piece of music there's a few riffs in the song electric which is on power to believe by king crimson which if you want to know what we're talking about listen to that track that basically um there's a lot of bands that do this, and that heaviness is not necessarily just how distorted is your guitar sound and how well, not, fast you play. It's not even yeah, yeah that that's a big one. Like a lot of people think like speed metal, thrash metal, grindcore, all that kind of music. That's like heavy. As heavy you know? as it gets. But it's it's kind of it's kind of not. What's good? There's one. Mm. So yeah, I mean that like I think that um that actually. Often it loses heaviness when, when things well, get it does. fast. And Precisely because a lot of those types of bands, that's all they do. It's one dynamic level. It's like full on all the time. That's yeah, it. Yeah. So if you don't have any contrast, any kind of anywhere it's coming from, somewhere it's going to, you lose the impact, which is yeah. something for our music we've always really tried to have is um, kind of more ambient areas and when we go heavy it needs to be I don't I don't want something this is well I don't I mean like I agree with what you're saying you know dynamics is important and and the move between uh you know sort of quieter cleaner sections and heavier make the heavier sections more powerful but in my opinion there's something else to it um, yeah, yeah just defining heavy itself well yeah I mean this it's powerful but the thing is for me what it is is like this kind of darkness like a thickness in the sound that's kind of like it's like intention. It's like in, yeah. there's an intent to malcontent, probably. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> like, you know, there's, there's, there's like a will to it. Like a, it's, it's powerful and it means business. Mm. And um, you know, because you know, if we're not well, saying this is that... why. It, like I class a lot of hip hop as heavy and a lot of drum and bass as heavy because it's a similar. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, the both those types of music have a really similar kind of attitude, I think, to metal. And heavy rock. A dubstep you know? as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Really heavy bits. Yeah. And like, um, but the thing is that it doesn't mean that you can't be fast and 
traditionally kind of like a death metal band or whatever that and and that's not heavy as a genre or as a feel because then you've got songs like spheres of madness by decapitated yeah that's heavy which is a heavy song yeah. um really really heavy and powerful and the weird thing is about that song is that i suppose like i find that when you listen to it when you haven't been listening to the whole album it actually has more impact than if you listen to it in the context of the album because there's not much dynamic variation in the album mm. But just like in its own right as a song, that's a really outright heavy song. Oh yeah, totally. But then, you know, there's example. I think Metallica really proved that... that sad being... but true is what you're going to say, isn't it? Well, that's, not just sad but I true. Know, I think... that's, that's just the, the whole sound behind that and everything. It's just... Because that's not a kind of traditionally fast, heavy or thrash thing. It's just because the, the way the kind of... It's so simple and they're all playing at the same sort of time and that gives it this this kind of power, like accenting mm. the same things and... Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I sort of feel like they really proved that that you don't have to be playing fast or anything like that in order to be heavy. I think that the heaviest stuff is kind of like in that period of... I think the Black Album has some of their heaviest... So, and that's debatable, you got Injustice for All and Kill, kill Em All. Um, I think Until It Sleeps is one the of the heaviest they've done. Yeah. You know, you know it. Mm. Until it sleeps. <laughs> that's, I've uh, never heard I'm it. Talking no. to yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know all of that stuff. Um, although I don't listen to all of it a lot, uh, but I only find myself listening to select albums. You know. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't. Then there's a lot of kind of like new metal that's completely not heavy, but it's kind of metal, you know, and it's not heavy in 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 the way that, and it's not to do with the distortion or the sound of the music so much. It's just not heavy, it's too, the energy about it is too kind of, um, I, I wanted to say positive, but, uh, you know, it's too poppy, well, it's too kind of light. I think that there has to be a density. Yeah, right. Real heavy yeah, it's really called density. Yeah, that's sold. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, it's true that there's a lot of Hip hop music that's very fucking heavy. There's a there's a track from from a guy that I don't even really remember the name. The, the track is called Simon Says, I think something like that. And it's got this amazing instrumental that does dun 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 dun. dun. It's, it's super heavy. Or for is example, hip yeah, his hip hop. Uh, for oh, example, yeah, I know that track. It's that fucking track. cool. And, and you know, D O D. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are very very heavy yeah you know it's all a matter of the, uh, how much density you can put into into the accent for me mm -hmm. see what i mean uh, it's it's something about the the movement of, of the music more than being distorted or yeah, being exactly. metal mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. it's, it's kind of well, making an important point you putting that sock on lucky cat has uh, stopped a stopped him being lucky no it's uh, it's his hat no i know but he's not <laughs> Oh, for fuck's you, sake, what the so fuck are you doing, Cat? Unlucky. Go on, please. Okay. Why don't you stop? This is our new manager, Fucking by the way, Cat. Yeah, yeah, I think it's more important than, than just saying it like that. So introducing our, our new band manager, uh, you know, we, we'd like to bring your draw your attention to Lucky Cat over here. Uh, so we went through a lot of kind of very intensive deliberations and considerations lots and meetings met lots who, who would really and what would what do we really want from a manager and mm. you know and what we like what we like the most was you know like gold skin that was one of the most important things yeah he stands out manager yeah, yeah. If, you know yeah. if you see him you know you, you take notice tom had a little fight with him and kicked him in the head at some point yeah well you remember that well, you got to keep him in line yeah well yeah we are educated him Mm. I like the fact that he didn't he didn't yeah. hold it against me. Yeah, yeah, he woke he, 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 he stood straight positive. up. Yeah. Yeah, the, that's the thing that Maybe he's just permanently trying to hit you. No, I think that I think that that's basically to me what he's saying is you guys rock. Yeah, right. Mm. And sometimes you need that positivity, you need that consistent attitude. You know, that's what I really like about him is the fact that he's constantly positive and has this can-do attitude. <clears throat> what about heaviness in the lyrics? What what kind of lyrics do you think are very heavy? For me, for example, all the lyrics are very fucking heavy. Because I... there are some kind of... You know, there, there's something about the, the Opus lyrics, especially in... Um, what's the name of the album? The one I like a lot. 
Uh, the last one that's done with uh, Ghost like, Reveries. Uh, Ghost Reveries. Yeah, Ghost, Ghost Reveries. Yeah. It's some kind of metal, very obscure opera in some way. You know what I mean? The way that it, it is in some way a concert album, even though it actually isn't. Uh, in the end, it, it's this darkness in the story. I mean, it, it mm -hmm. talks about murdering. I think one of the songs actually talks about uh, the the murder of of the character's mother. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a like serial killer at some point. Yeah. He's escaping. It, it, yeah, yeah. I think that kind of Concepts. stuff is. Yeah, I think that kind of stuff is heavier, for example, than writing about you know adolescent depression stuff like that. I think for me, to mm -hmm. be completely honest, especially because there are bands that keep talking about adolescent stuff, even though they are in their forty, <laughs> fifties. You know, like Gorn, sells. like Gorn, for example. Yeah, well, if it sells. Um, yeah, I know. That's I mean, if uh, they start singing about being 45 or 50 or yeah. however old they are, I'm sure. <laughs> being 50 you know, and a millionaire. <laughs> uh, you know, um, whatever it is, hair loss and whatever else goes on, um, they probably wouldn't sell as many albums. But to be honest, all you said, Brown, for me, this is just honesty and the fact that I don't actually pay that much attention to... Uh, to what's being said mm. in, in in lyrics, as much as you do, certainly, or conceptually in an album, what is well, being I th said. I think the word heaviness would be used in a different context when you're talking about lyrics, because you'd I think in I'd be I'd use that word to describe like depth and meaning and it being a deep subject or something. I suppose it would yeah, but it would be a different kind yeah, of yeah, but thing it, it, it 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 leads to the thing is it, I don't think heaviness is the sound. Heaviness is the, is the moment in the music. Yeah, I don't moment think heaviness in. is that is. Um, and that concept brings an emotional weight. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, think it is necessarily necessarily related to like negative or bleak things. No, I know. think it's it's related to intent. powerful or yeah, yeah. intense intense yeah. Will. Yeah. Intent. Yeah. Yeah. will. Yeah, well, weight um, basically. Yeah, how much weight it's yeah. got. Like for yeah, example, exactly. with Gojira, they are very fucking heavy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even though you know their li their lyrics are pretty transcendental and you know, mm -hmm. in some way, not they they are kind of positive. Yeah, yeah, they you are. Know, they have a positive yeah, yeah. tendency anyway. Mm -hmm. They well, still talk about bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really good example. Oh, it's, it is at least a, you know some kind of motivation to towards, you know, a positive change or anyway, a yeah. change in some yeah. way. A mm. e evolution, spiritual evolution yeah. and, and development. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty much what Tool have done too with Laterals and what we are doing. But, much yeah. Tool is much more internal. Because there is more kind yeah, of it's more kind and of and social and yeah. Yeah. I, I think the reason for that, I think a way of putting it's it the difference between Art Watts and Terence McKenna for me, you know. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, like a way, a way of, of looking at that is really, it's passion, isn't it? You know, it doesn't necessarily m matter what the meaning is or what the intent is or what the goal is or the aim is. It's yeah, the, the intensity is, of yeah, it. Yeah. The point is that it's, it comes from a place that's, that fully means it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Mm. <coughs> and I, sub I don't know, I mean, I wonder what actually leads to having that kind of mentality maybe a certain kind of maturity, I guess, leads to that, or just being a certain kind of person that is very passionate, I suppose. Well, I Are think you? it's about having a defined idea, whatever it is, whether it's a, a concept type thing, or whether it's just, in terms of music, just purely a, a, an artistic vision, like having <laughs> a defined, definite thing that you're fully behind, because that's the thing that makes the difference, is the fact that you're putting everything into this because you fully believe in it. That's mm. what gives it its power and intensity, I think. Yeah. It can come from all sorts of different sources. Yeah, exactly. Anything. And, you you know, it crosses genres as well. Yeah, totally. But it's not to say that heaviness is the only kind of thing that goes on in music and that... Like classical you know, music, some classical oh, music. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of the, yeah. One of the yeah, heaviest yeah, pieces yeah. of music Absolutely. ever is Mars. Yeah. From the Planet Suite. Or... I fucking think, yeah. incredibly heavy. One of, probably <laughs> one of the heaviest things I've ever heard uh, uh, is uh, Chopin's uh, Funeral March, mm. you know? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That absolutely. fucking dum, dum, da, dum, dum. <laughs> that, that's the fucking heaviest <laughs> yeah. thing it's ever. really heavy. You know? It's, I actually think that slow music it, it can be way, way heavier than... than, than, yeah. than mm -hmm. yeah. 
Like more kind of it's, modern it's, pop culture, like in um, the kind of title music in Terminator Two, that mm-hmm. five four piece of music. When you know what I think out. it is, and when you and when you listen to a band like Tool, like they're, they're heavy, right, and and um, they have a lot of space in their music, and actually like Spheres of Madness is the slowest song on the, on their on their album. I think what it is, is that it provides space, and that space kind of draws attention in, and it's like. It, it just allows for space for the meaning of the message to, to exist there, you know. Yeah, and allow, when having, like, so many people have said it, like, space and gaps and pauses yeah. in music are the most important thing because yeah. that's what makes rhythm. More you know? than the actual sound, yeah. And like, if, you're, if you're just playing, like, blast beats constantly, mm. Mm. It's, it's not heavy, it's confused. It's, yeah, well, it's just... Not necessarily. It's just fast. It's just not... It's like, just flat. Yeah. Dynamically flat. It's like with everything, right? You know. The, you know, it's the the contrast between black and white and uh, space and, and matter and you know, mm. that's what makes it up. There, there's also a lot of, of pop music nowadays that, that's becoming kind of heavy in some way. Mm. Like in in terms of importance music um, musically as uh, I mean. Like the you know a guy called Woodkin. Ever heard of him? Well, let me just show show the guy to you. Uh, oh, for example, you know, music with with massive attack. They can be very very heavy. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes. Faithless. Um, live. Faithless. Yeah. Live massive attack as well. Are fucking heavy. They're mm. live. They're a lot harder than they are on their album for some reason. Very very good live band. And like Idiotech, Radiohead. To me, that's got a heaviness to it. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, there are examples in every kind of music, you know, by a lot of different bands, and and I think that um, that's the general. I think that gives a really good overview or point of, or it gives a really good idea of our point of view on that. Um, you know, we're not actually really trying to be any particular genre. We're we're really trying to kind of get a message across as succinctly, deeply, and directly as we possibly can. Yeah, we 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 actually. We, we actually decided before we started working on this album, on our second album, we had decided that we wanted this one to be definitely heavier than the, the previous one. In all this, in all the ways that we, we've mentioned, right? Mm. Yeah, but you know, another thing is lightness. And lightness to me is kind of like a kind, a kind of rela- relaxation, not necessarily in terms of the sound, but in terms of like a kind of atmospheric, Release openness, yeah. It's kind of like tension and release. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tensions yeah. like the heaviness and release is is the open, spacious, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, lightness, and um, and so uh, either one of them and anywhere within that, you know, kind of spectrum. Uh, spectrum, can be good. And I mean, you got pop that's fantastic. That's not necessarily particularly heavy. Uh, but nevertheless incredibly good in a completely different way, so it's and, not necessary. And you know, that openness, I think it is what, that's what makes rock music what it is. I think that's what uh, distinguishes rock music from, from other genres. This, this capability of opening, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for example with Pearl Jam, you know, like in Even Flow, that, that, that chorus that, that opens so much. Or oh, for example, a very cool one from Pearl Jam in this respect is um, Given to fly, mm. you know when when that's the chorus and no waves came crashing. It opens so much. It it, it really spreads its wings in some mm. way, and I think it's something that only rock music can do. It's the only kind of music that actually gives me or that in kind that of way. feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or for us, maybe I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, for me, of course. I maybe, talk maybe about that's, me. Yeah. that's the right way. About myself, I think, the way that I feel about it. But you know, I love every kind of music. Mm. I mean, I listen to. Pretty much oh, yeah. everything, like apart from, I don't know, salsa. What's wrong with salsa? Uh, it's cool, I just don't listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to I salsa. I suppose it's cool to dance I, I admit with. That I, I don't either. But I love waltzer, for example. How do you, how do you, how do you pronounce it in English? Waltz. 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 Yeah, we call it ba- Waltz. Yeah. Waltzer. In, in uh, I, love I don't it. listen to that either. I listen a lot to Astor Piazzolla, for example, to, to uh, South American artists and I love it but still rock is the only kind of music that gives me that that kind of wing spreading 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think well the thing is, rock is such a massively broad genre, and it can easily encompass virtually any other genre within it. It's kind of it's so flexible and malleable. That's yeah. That's kind of what's so attractive about it. I think. Yeah, but it's still got its distinctive traits, right? Yeah, but I think they're a lot looser than with uh, with some other, certain other forms of music, anyway. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure about that actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you get a lot of, of different kinds of hip hop and a lot of different kinds of classical music, a lot of different kinds of pop music. You know, so, yeah. don't even get onto jazz. That's one of the widest yeah, yeah. forms of music going. Yeah, eventually it all just links into itself, and you know everything is. Well, to be honest, what like it's like national boundaries and stuff. It's kind of pointless. It's a yeah. It's just a way of. Pigeonholing things. And the things that are important are the things we're talking about. The moods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the depth yeah, of the mood. The mood, the intent, the purpose. Even, you know what? Even technique and style of playing is not as important. It's only a tool to get across the mood yeah, that you yeah. want to get across. Yeah. I mean, like, we've had uh, lots of discussions about this. I'm going to bring up punk. Um, uh-huh. Because cause I've, I've always liked punk music. Um, Tom doesn't understand why. Me at all. This I is just the think clash. They're fucking brilliant. Yeah, you know what it oh is? yeah, what well, the clash are not fucking punk. I mean, they're yeah, part yeah, of they the punk like movement, but they're more like. <laughs> I mean, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they've done even just fucking reggae music and, and yeah, ska. Yeah, you know yeah, what they, I mean? They are, yeah, you can't really call them punk in terms of music. I mean, for well, me, punk, punk is like. Sex pistols. Sex pistols bullshit. Yeah, you know? sex pistols are rubbish. Yeah. The, they, they were like a manufactured. Yeah. They were like the pop band at the time. They were like. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, you know, the thing is about about punk for me is that. No effects are an awesome band. Okay. They're pretty. You know, cool. Rancid. They're fun. fucking right. brilliant. Yeah. What? Yeah, rancid. Yeah, they're cool. They do cool stuff, but it's not. You know like, what I mean, it cool is? in terms of it's fun. Okay, it's entertaining yeah, yeah, in some yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah. You know what the problem is for me is that it's shallow. Yeah. It's so uh, obvious. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I'm going to rebel, you know, and I'm going to, oh, I don't care. But even just uh, musically, you know, it's just that there's not, it's it's yeah. a fucking formula, formula mm-hmm. that that's brought on over and over with the same traits. Over the only thing Punk did that was really worthwhile was bridge the gap to grunge. Mm. Sorry, Dave. That's my opinion. I mean, you know, fine. Punk. Yeah, well, yeah, some, some, I just don't like Nirvana, for example, were considered a punk well, that band was in some way, right? New wave punk, yeah. They were like yeah. grunge with them, and yeah, what turned into grunge, basically. I put them right. I put them at the start of grunge because you you know they're they're more punk than grunge if you compare them to to, to other grunge bands well, yeah, like Alice in Chains or Soundgarden or mm. Pearl Jam. You know. Well, I think. Grunge is a bit of a weird one because I think it got um, it was kind of geographic in a way because a lot of them were out of Seattle yeah. and it was kind of like a movement they were all at the same mm-hmm. sort of time um, mm-hmm. so it's not really a term in a way that describes it musically it's more encompassing that whole yeah. movement mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah we can go on forever because the thing is then we can talk about what it would be like to be in an area where there is that feeling and that you know that, that kind of that uh, movement music like Seattle in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. In that time, in that space, there was a really unique thing. And you could even be there and have no idea what's going on. By the way, I'm pretty sure, you know, I'm, I'm growing more and more convinced of the fact that the fucking weather of the country that you live in has a big effect on the kind of music that you make. And that's why that, the best music in the world gets written in England. And that's, <laughs> well, I can tell you this, okay? Grunge music c- came out of, of, trending of on Seattle. Seattle. <laughs> and I know. as far as I know, Seattle is a pretty depressing city because it's mm. very cloudy and it's pretty much like London, I think. And same thing you can say about Sweden, for example. I mean, some of the best and heaviest bands out there. Yeah, the well, I know, I know what you're, you're saying, are Swedish. right? But do you know what I think it is? I think it's variation. It's the fluctuation in weather, mm. extreme difference. Mm. Mm. Um, I think that has a, like, some kind of emotional effect. On effect, people. yeah. Yeah, but, no, you of know, course it does. For example, in Italy, we make so a lot of... If you have, like, sun 24-7... Yeah, definitely, can... for example, in Italy... In, but I look in at South Australians, the... they're always smiling, like, all the time. Are they? Yeah. Pretty That's much. a pretty big generalisation. <laughs> I mean, they're all Australians. No, no, but, are always but they, 
But yeah. Well, you can definitely say <laughs> the South Americans. I mean. they, they tend to smile a lot more and be... I think, like, South Americans, and, and there are other countries that are more, that are more characterized by this kind of thing, like South America, for example. South America, yeah. And mm. Italy, if you... Well, of course, Italian music is not very famous world, worldwide, apart from the very famous things. Pavarotti. But if you go to the side... Huh? Pavarotti. Do you yeah. make music in Italy? Is music made? I think we, we have influenced the fucking <laughs> music uh, scene all over the world for, I don't, I don't in, so. in, in like a major way. What's you know, opera and, and lyrical singing and shit. I've never, never heard of Luna. Luna. Never heard of we opera. fucking invented Luna Coil, is that, is that an Italian band? <laughs> huh? I Luna think they are. Yeah, Lacuna Coil. Lacuna Coil. Are they? Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm not going to take your word for it, Dave. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not, not going to take your word for it. Definitely not a fan. Because two two non fans over here. All right, if he's not a fan, then I'm not shit. There's yeah. nothing amazing. I mean. Yeah, but you know, I mean, what the, I think a lot of it comes down to the infrastructure of the industry within within the geographical oh, yeah. location. Yeah, definitely. Because if you've got an infrastructure and a history of that industry and the and the producers and the the record com uh, recording studios and whatever else it is in the infrastructure within that country, then it leads to continuation of that so maybe there are some amazing um really amazing unknown italian bands we should actually oh, yeah the, the, it. it's just a matter of language man you just yeah. don't it, the problem is this the problem with this planet is that only music sung in english can be appreciated by by a, a foreigner uh, audience that's the old fucking problem because there's amazing music there, there is amazing music everywhere mm -hmm. Japan Japanese make amazing fucking music they are amazing some French bands are amazing some 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 Spanish band but the only ones that break through the internationally are the it's ones just that it's a matter English. of language yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean we what have Ramstein like very, 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 oh, Ramstein that's because German yeah. is fucking similar to English man no, it's very no, it's, it's not, very no. it's very easy to metabolize in in, in that way it's not like French. It's not. I could never enjoy Gojira if they. Were, I totally if, could. if the guy were singing in I, French. I totally could. I don't care. I don't yeah, care. No, what I could. That's why I've often said to you, you should write and sing in Italian if if you want to. Sometimes. That's huh? why I've always I've often said to you that you should write. And sing yeah, in but Italian. I just don't feel like it. It's just a matter of uh, what I think is that you, when you make music, when you make art, you, or, or any kind of message that you try to spread. Mm. Supposedly, you 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 try to spread it as much as possible and make it uh, enjoyable and understandable by uh, as many people as possible. Mm. So for me, it's just natural to to use the the most spread mm -hmm. language, you know. And it's also because Maybe I mean, let's start. face it, English is fucking. It, it, it Maybe just, you should start learning it's Chinese. And no, I think it Chinese. sucks. What do you mean by Chinese? Mandarin. Okay. <laughs> That's another kind of music that I just cannot <laughs> listen to, apart from the fact that they suck in making music. But Who? What? The Chinese. The Chinese. It's yeah. not so broad, gen what broad generalizations yeah. going yeah. on today. Yeah, I've never heard a fucking single piece of music coming from China that was even just remotely decent. No, I can't think of any to I be can't honest, think but I haven't done extensive <laughs> research. So. Well, I, I can say I did, but I have, you know... I'm, I mean, surely we'd have heard some if there was a lot of it out there, so. we'd have heard some of it. Yeah. So for whatever reason, that's really not going on very much. And you know, you have other countries that don't really produce any kind of groundbreaking uh, music or you know have that culture. One like Brazilian music is very very fucking good. Yeah, it's awesome. Even mm -hmm. I mean, apart from their own music, their their traditional music, which is amazing, of course, they have an amazing metal scene. But mm -hmm. all of the very good, you only get to know the ones that sing. The one which the singer sings in English, like mm. Angra or uh, Sepultura, you know what? Well, mm. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. mm. Well, that's kind of it's why just... Sepultura is precisely why they have a scene. Yeah. You know, they yeah. were like one of the first South American metal bands that kind of made it international. One of the best metal bands ever. Yeah, definitely. Angra are better. You don't even know the guys. I, I, I don't well, you know them, but you don't li really listen to it. Like albums. anything, you have to put it in context. You know, Sepultura are an old band. Yeah, I know. No. Well, they're, they're pretty old too. I don't th it's different. It's a different kind of music anyway. I'll check them out. There's one album from Angra which is amazing. Uh, that's called Temple of Shadows, I think. With the new singer. The second singer. Alright, we've gone completely off topic. Yeah. So, let's, uh, let's... That wine. Yeah. 
is not nice. Doesn't surprise me because it wasn't expensive. <laughs> and that wine is really good. I know, that wine's lovely. Um, yeah, so this is uh, Italian... No, it's not. Sorry, no, it's Australian. Australian. <laughs> it's um, Australian. I got it... What's this called? Because, uh, it's called Jammy Red Rue. Yeah, definitely Yellow an Italian Italian name, man. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking Italian. Yeah, man. Just, My, it's more Italian than, the, than Pavarotti, for fuck's sake. I just counted the vowels in the, in the words and assumed it was Italian. Um... <laughs> Yeah, no. and, um, I mean, a... it's got a fucking kangaroo on it. I mean, it's it's obviously. <laughs> I Italian. knew it was a strong. <laughs> I mean, Don't you have that... them in Italy? Oh yeah, we're full of fucking kangaroos in the parliament. <laughs> oh, They're right. the fucking country, man. Um, okay, so I think that we should move on to the album. Report. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna demonstrate that English people don't <laughs> shit about <laughs> other countries and other languages. <laughs> what does this mean, Rioja? What does it, it mean? It means damn good wine. It means what does it mean? Drinky. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that any, I mean, Spanish people, Italian people, and, and I don't know, Portuguese people, they, they can all come to the conclusion that Rioja, Rioja, whatever it's, it's pronounced, you means, can't even pronounce means it. Rioja. red, you know, but they can't, because they can only fucking speak and understand English, they are super limited in this. And that's why the, the musical, the, the, the world of music is ruled by English. Crimea River speaking, <laughs> Ben. Are you finished? Crimea, Crimea River. fucking real, man. <laughs> yeah, Crimea I love, River. I love this expression. It's a, yeah, right. so... It's right. American, right? Shh. Cultural rant is over now. Huh? Cultural rant time is over. Okay, yeah. Um, you know that I used to think that that's, that, that saying said that Crimean River? You're talking about the fucking Justin Timberlake song. Crimean River. Crimea River. Crime, yeah, Crimea River. Oh. It's a way to say it's like, you know... Yeah, we know. Shut up. Yeah. It, it's not <laughs> English, is it? What? I mean, it's not from England. It's, I think it is an, an American I think it's word. an American yeah. thing. Anyway, I used to think that it, it was actually Crimean River. <clears throat> but anyway, so uh, we are dan done now with this segment of this video. And we're going to move on to the album review. <laughs> Brown, you should start, because this is really important album for you. Okay, today we are going to talk about Pearl Jam's 10. Uh, this is very, this is kind of tough for me because it's pretty, well, it's obvious for me, for myself, that this is a very important al album as, uh, as in this is one of my favorite bands of all time. Especially, uh, I have a big, big passion for, for, for Eddie Vedder. Not in a homosexual way. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. He's definitely my, my, my number one singer out there. And, and uh, he's inspired me a lot during my, my own life. I remember when I was 14, uh, I started spending a lot of time listening to, to, to them. And, and, and that, that's the, the first... Uh, American band that I have started singing the songs of. When what um, year did you start? What year did you get it? I don't know actually. I have no idea. Have a think about it. Well, here it was. I think I was fourteen. Yeah. I seem to remember I was fourteen, fifteen mm -hmm. tops. Mm -hmm. uh, At the exact same time. At the exact same time, I was I was listening to it and really into it. And uh, yeah, this is also, I got a weird relationship with, with Eddie Vedder in terms of, not with him directly, I suppose. He doesn't even, <laughs> he doesn't even know who the fuck I am. But with his voice, and you know, a lot of people say that, that I sound a bit or a lot like him. But it has nothing, actually, it's, not, it's nothing that, that I uh, worked on or, or it wasn't deliberate and it's just... It just happens that we have a kind of similar voice. I, I think suppose you've got it, a similar timber to your yeah, voice. Yeah, I suppose it's influenced influenced me in terms of delivery, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the in the kind of passion that I try to to convey and and uh, even the, the technical delivery, the, the the length of the of the phrases and and the way that I that I speak and sing the the, the vowels. He's a lot gruffer than you. He is, yeah. He's more Robert Plant. He is. I think, you know, the idea the idea that I get from him is that he doesn't really give a shit about being... about having a, a clean delivery. I think when he, when he, when he gets into the, into the studio to record, 
he just fucking sings. And he's like, that's it, it's good. That's the idea that, that I always got from him. Which is basically the, the opposite for me, because, you know, that I'm quite of a, you know, I'm somewhat, somewhat of, some, in some way I'm a perfectionist, even though I'm not really, but probably more than well, him. Well, even though you're not perfect. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, I'm definitely not perfect. Nobody's perfect. But I try to, to, to get as, as close as possible to what I have in my mind, and it's kind of um, designed in some way, you mm -hmm. know? Even the, the, the very delivery of it, the very form of the final take, is somewhat designed in my mind. Mm. Whereas I think that it, it just is much more of a, of a rocker in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. I think he doesn't give a shit. The, well, the idea that I always got from him is that he doesn't give a shit. Eddie Vedder doesn't give a shit. So it, when I say that, I think he's one of. I think he's a he's a living legend for me. He's a living legend, and I think he's one of the greatest of all times. And if you don't agree, he doesn't give a shit. You know, <laughs> you can talk as much shit about, uh, 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 as you want about him because Eddie Vedder doesn't give a shit, and and I don't give a shit either. <laughs> So go on and say what you think. Yeah, I think for me your, it's just your it's vocal just... style. It's kind of the it's like di diaphragmatic singing. There's a oh, certain yeah, power yeah. in yeah. the way that. And I've learned from him. <laughs> I've learned from him. I remember uh, one of the albums that that really got got me into them was uh, Live on Two Legs, and I've listened to that so much, so fucking much. I know it by heart. I mean, every it, all the the. the, the the singings and, and the delivery and I know them by heart. Mm. And I, I remember studying the way that he used to sing, even though, you know, with years I, I realized that the singing was far from perfect. But you can feel, at least if you're a singer, you can hear and feel the push that, 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 mm. that he, that he, that he exercises. He, he definitely, he, you can really feel the way that he pushes the air out of his mouth uh, pushing from from the belly, you know, mm. you can really hear the yeah, the, the force, the, the power of of his diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like a, it's like he's shooting out mm. his voice. Mm. And, and that, I bet he sings really loud as well. Oh yeah, definitely. And that's that's why I think it's so amazing, you know. It, it's because it's not very technical. It's kind of like operatic in a way. Yeah, in some way. But I think it's a natural in some way, you know. Mm. He's like a cannon. He's a human cannon, basically. Mm. So are you. he always he always manages to make things. To sort things out in some way, you you know, of course there are times and episodes in which he doesn't have a lot of voice. <coughs> and you can definitely, I can definitely hear when a singer is is struggling to, you know, when his throat is has betrayed him and mm -hmm. he's struggling to to mm -hmm. to bring out the the voice. It's a brilliant video on YouTube yeah. of that. Yeah, and he definitely he always manages to. He's like. He's, he's like he thinks I'm gonna do it and or die trying, you know. Mm. And he always manages to fucking shoot out. It's like a passion. Something. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it, that, it's like this whole because yeah. really great singers, their whole body just gets yeah, involved. Yeah, in that's it. it's like that, a power thing. Exactly. That, that's it. That's what that's what I learned from him to use your body. He uses his whole body when he sings. You know, he's mm. not just in the throat or he uses yeah. everything. He gives yeah. everything and. He's got so much, so much passion. For me, is the is the uh, epitome, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. of passion in, in, in a singer. Mm. He's yeah, all totally about agree, it. Yeah. He doesn't give a sh He really doesn't give a shit about anything else. Mm. And when he was a, when he was young, he was a psycho. You know, he used to 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 climb these this super high, you know, uh, yeah. frames and yeah, yeah, and, and the, the, the stage and lighting and yeah, and he used to, to the balcony. Yeah, he used to dive from I don't know seven, ten meters. Uh, yeah, he was. I think Eddie Vedder was the real grunge, you know. Uh, he, he was actually representing the, the the spirit of the of the movement. Mm -hmm. He was more punk. Way than more punks. than yeah. <laughs> way more than others. Way more than than other singers in the movement, which yeah. more, which were sometimes super drag. Well, drag Kurt addicts. Cobain did a pretty kind of. He, he was quite a rebel. Yeah, but Kurt Cobain. Well, oh yeah, definitely. But uh, he was also very very. Contrived, right? Yeah, and some kind. I think, of course, I've never known the guy, but by what I know about him, he was very depressed, and and you know, he he, he was overwhelmed by the whole thing. Mm -hmm. That's the difference with Eddie Vedder. He never got overwhelmed. Mm. He was in control of not being in control. You know what I mean? 
But you know the weird thing is, is yeah, I I find with him a certain amount of control. Like you never feel that he's out of control, mm -hmm. but you still feel that he's kind of a loose cannon in a way. Like he's com he's unpredictable. You know, he's, he, I think he's he, he's a responsible crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I've always felt about him. Yeah. He was crazy in some way, but also very responsible. And, and, and you know, he was committed yeah. to the thing. He was committed to the band, so he would never fuck the band up. So he, he was able to to constrain his own self in order not to fuck the band up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's always been a drinker and he's still a drinker. He drinks a lot of wine, especially Italian wine, I think. I think really? he's got uh, uh, he's got a house in Rome somewhere, I think. She's he's got fine. a passion for Italy. Uh, a lot of people, <coughs> a lot of singers, also Mike Patton, you know. That's because Radiohead he's, he's as well, Radiohead. Cool. Yeah. Spend a lot of time in Italy. Um, anyway, 10. It's got, of course, amazing, legendary songs in it. You all know it. Uh, it's got one of the most famous love songs in history, which is Black, of course. Uh, it's got one of the most amazing rock songs, which is Even Flow. It's got some amazing ballads. And, 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 and for me, the special one in this album is, is Jeremy. Uh, a lot of people... I suppose, it's a great know. song. I just, I'm oversaturation to it, you know? <clears throat> Cause it, it's got played so much and yeah. heard it so much, but... And it kind of ruins it in a way, but yeah, it's a great song. It's yeah. a it's a great album. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a passionate album. Yeah, it's very rock. I think it, it, it is. Extremely yeah, well, that's in terms of talking about the grunge movement and stuff. They were they were very different because they sounded a lot more kind of like older older classic rock than you know like Soundgarden or Mudhoney or any of the others or Nirvana. Yeah, um, where they were definitely less experimental than Alice in Chains, for example. Mm -hmm. They were just rock. I think, for me, they're not even that grunge, to be honest. For me, they're, just, they're, they're more like classic, yeah, classic know. rock, yeah. you know what I mean? Hard mm -hmm. rock or that kind of music. Yeah, Very in a fresh way. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But like, like I was kind of, I pointed out earlier, he, he's kind of got characteristics that remind me of Robert Plant in singing. And musically, yeah, they've it's it's very kind of rocky. We're talking a hell of a it's lot also, about singing, but I think it's because it's so important in this album. You know, oh, yeah. uh, this is not. I mean, <laughs> it's not nice to say. Of course, I love them all. I think they're all very good musicians, and of course, it's not all about Eddie Vedder. But for me, it's my opinion. Uh, he's made the band. Totally agree. You know? <laughs> for me, Pearl Jam is Eddie Vedder. Totally agree. You know? I mean, the other guys are great. I mean, yeah, they're, they're good all great. They do. But he's the X factor. Yeah, mm. definitely. He's the guy who is like the enigma. Yeah, right? and also the stuff that he's done by himself is, is so good, especially, you know, the, the the soundtrack for Into the Wild and and he loves he's always loved English music a lot. He's a big fan of, of Do and mm -hmm. and Pink Floyd of course and Led Zeppelin. Well he doesn't like either of them. Huh? <laughs> he doesn't like either of them. What do you mean? Quite a few people. <laughs> um, let me just uh, give you some boring information now. So, about this album. Yeah. I'll do it as quickly <laughs> as I can, okay? So, the album was released uh, in August uh, 1991. And the interesting thing about that, it was one year after the formation of the band, which I found really weird because, you know, it's such a congealed Gelled sound. sound yeah. But I sort of feel like, actually... I think it. W I'm not sure who, but there were two members of the band who were in a previous band that split up. Yeah, they um, already had songs. Hmm. Well, that's pretty common. I think Gossard and and McCready maybe. Anyway, they were in in Mother of Bone. Yeah. Before. Mother of Bone. I'm not sure about the name of the band. Sounds right. But anyway, yeah. they were in a different band. Um, Mother Love Bone. Yeah. yeah that's okay. It. So. Yeah, one year after formation, they, they released that album. Um, yeah, Ament and, and Gossard, Mother Love Born, yeah. So, the album actually went 13 times platinum, okay? It's pretty good. This is in the, <laughs> this, this album, in terms of album sales, is probably is higher than any album we've done so far in review. It is in the top 50 best-selling albums in US history. Mm -hmm. uh, it sold uh, something like... 
uh, 12, no, uh, 10, million. And a half, 10 and a half million copies. Mm. 10 and a half million. So 13 times certified platinum. Um, okay, so basically, about the sound of the album really quick, I, I felt like when I listened to the, to the original version of the album, it really lacked low end. It was, it's just so, it's really, it doesn't have a lot of kind of grunt and power. It, it just, uh, it's a lot too much high end, in my opinion, not very balanced. They remastered it, you know, at some point. That's right, I'm going to come on to that. Um, so the bass guitar, I felt, was a little bit, um, how can I put this, wimpy. Mm -hmm. And I, f I also noticed a lot of tape sound on it, especially in the yeah. bass, and also, which is to be expected, but also a lot of reverb, so a lot of like late 80s long reverb sounds in the drums, and for me it's not a good at sounding album. Um, I think this album uh, had the same producer of the last album that we reviewed, Brendan O'Brien, not sure. No, not originally, mm -hmm. um, but there is a connection. So it was an ear engineered originally by a guy called Dave Hillis. Um, it was mixed by a guy called Tom uh, Tim Palmer. He also worked with U2, Bon Jovi, Big Country, Tears for Fears. He also produced David Bowie's uh, debut LP with Tin Machine in okay. 1989. Most interestingly, Tim Palmer was a guy who mixed In Absentia yeah, really? by Porcupine Tree. And uh, that was after he moved to LA. And Porcupine Tree's In Absentia, which was really their breakthrough album, was mixed was uh, recorded in Avatar Studios, which is also in LA. Bit of a side topic, interesting, Tim Palmer. Tim Palmer is the mix engineer. Um, I hadn't actually heard about him too much before I started researching this. Mastered also by Bob Ludwig, who was a guy who did Rage Against the Machines, <laughs> um, Evil Empire, very oh. prolific mastering engineer, especially around that time. Recorded in Seattle, not surprisingly. Um, and then they also re-released it uh, in March 2009, and the remix of the entire album was done by Brendan O'Brien, who was the guy who produced Evil Empire. Uh -huh. And that guy, yeah, he's clearly <laughs> clearly a genius. Yeah, he's worked on a lot of amazing albums. Um, and I think he's done also Soundgarden's um, the name of the album? Super Unknown. Super Unknown. Super Unknown. So, so I listened to the set, to the to the re-release, and it's called Legacy Edition. If you're well, a fan of this album, mm. you've got to get Legacy Edition. It's a, it just sounds better. It just <laughs> sounds better. It's, it's just like the production, more, better bass, and it just sounds a lot better. Mm. They call it a remaster. It's actually really a remix. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, every aspect of it to me just sounds have to check that better. Out. So I, I really recommend getting that. In terms of a listening experience, it's a lot. It's a lot better, and actually, I know Pearl Jam themselves weren't happy at the end of the whole process, fully happy with the album. Maybe after a while, because at the start, you know, they're thinking this is their debut album, they've never done anything this big, and they got all these top guys, you know, involved and probably quite a big budget around it. And it goes to, to um, Tim Palmer, who has worked with at that point a lot of very well known uh, bands. David Bowie, I think, was one of the ones that he did just before this with Tim Machine. And so they just thought, yeah, okay, it's fine. But after a while, it must have sunk in with them that it doesn't mm -hmm. sound the way they wanted it to sound. And, you know, I, I think that, obviously, it sounded good enough for you to be able to hear the singing. And, you know, it sounded good enough for it to become 13 times <laughs> platinum. <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is... And uh, I think this is, you know, something with musicians, uh, we always strive to, to have... The, the kind of sound that we have in our minds and we tend to feel and think that if it doesn't sound the way that you had designed uh, in, your, in your mind, it doesn't sound good. But it's not the same way that the, that the audience, the audience mm. uh, perceives it. Well, it's the same with any form of art. Like, I don't think you're ever going to be 100% truly happy and especially when it's collaborative, when you're working yeah. with... But still, people are going to like it. Sometimes you think it sounds like shit because it's not exactly the sound that you had in mind. But people that, that listen to it think that it sounds amazing, because they are they they, they listen to it from from a from a from a neutral objective, yeah, objective. perspective, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a of an obsession, I suppose, of mm. artists in general. And musicians. yeah, I mean, I think that you know, thirteen times platinum, or at that time it might have been twelve times platinum, or whatever it was when they when the time came for them to remix it. 
and not being 100% happy with it and thinking, yeah, okay, that's done. I think that just shows, doesn't it? But, I, I mean, it's their top-selling album, of course, of all time. Um, and I think really definitive and kind of by far standout piece in their careers as a band. Yeah, and especially... Which is a real shame for a band, really, having your debut being the peak. That's, uh, I'd hate to be in that position. Especially if it's one year after you fall the band. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, the Vitology that came after, there were, there were a few good tracks. Mm, What's that, that one that really good much. track? Something Probably. to do with Sun. From which one? Vitology. What do you say? Spin the black circle. Spin the black, black, circle. Yeah. black circle. You know, the point with Pearl Jam is that, as I said before, I think they are a weird, especially at Deep Better, they have a weird relationship with the studio and the recording. And they always end up sounding weird in, in, in the record <coughs> in some way. I think this is the one that sounds, be sounds Yield. best, actually. Yield is good. I like Yield. But if you listen to their songs, each one of their songs, when they play them live, all of them are amazing. They're all fucking well, good. Yeah, I was disappointed because I, I never saw them live around this time, but um, I went to see them live actually with your brother. Um, I don't know when, maybe about four or five years ago at Wembley, and they were fucking shit. They were, I was really disappointed. It was well, a really bad gig. You know, they, have, they, they do so many it gigs, man. really bad. So many was, fucking gigs. I, so you was, never know what, what's going on with them. Incredibly unimpressive. What do you mean bad in the worst It was back? just, it was just bland, kind of, they didn't play particularly well. You know, this is the interesting thing, good. this is the interesting thing about Pearl Jam, I sort of feel like they lost their edge after this album, right, mm. like, and it's all to do with Eddie Vader. Uh, um, you know, he he's kind of ballsy and out there, and I think that Vitology it's really kind of like toned down and gradually it's toned down more and more and now I kind of view them as this this like almost country kind of country pumpkin type relaxed you know kind of like hippie trippy stoner almost stoner rock do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. he's a little bit um, he's a little bit boring in my opinion now relative to that album which was a magical album okay and I think that's what makes a difference in impact. Phytology, I was so disappointed. Mm -hmm. I remember because I was really into that album. Um, actually, the reason that I really got into that album uh, originally was because he used the word fuck uh, a couple <laughs> of times. In, in, I know, it's ridiculous, <laughs> right? But I was, I was like 12 or 13, I can't remember, 12 again, I think. And, but it was the f like one of the first albums I really got into. And that was one of the things that really got me into it. And ever since, I've loved it. Um, I think it's an amazing album. I would actually dedicate 70% of that to Eddie Vader, at least. At least maybe more, 70 to 80%. I really think that there's something special about him and his performance in this album. And um, and so anyway, I was really into it. I was really looking forward to Vitology. I got it on the day it came out. I'm just so happy. And I thought it was not very good. I, I'm just yeah. not impressed. You know, I think he's underwhelmed. Also... As the, as the and there's they're, one they're, really they're, evolution they're also... is good from Ye from Yield. The song Evolution. Is Your really album good. is good. I mean, it's just that they, yeah. they always try to to do different things from album to album. So you can't actually you can't really expect them to 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 be consistent in, in, in... when 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 a band is always trying to, to do different things, I mean, it's different to, to, to be consistent with, with the way that you like them and how much you like them. Yeah, but there is something else. There's something else which is like the kind of magic, right? There's a magic in that album. Mm -hmm. There's passion. There's something well, I think really... it's... The thing is with that, it's, it's energy. It's got... That album's got a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, and maybe that comes from, you know, like a... Being young being and hungry. Being young, you... Yeah. yeah, exactly. Especially new in the context of one year within that band. Yeah, yeah. Totally. yeah, maybe it's better to be like Tool and just release very, very few albums. And well, look at how long Pearl Jam's career is, you know. Yeah. And Their made first album was before. Yeah, they've made a lot of albums. Have they made more? More than five? Oh, yeah, they've made a lot. My first know. album wasn't before Tool's first album. That was 91. Yeah, when was, okay. when yeah, was uh, okay. 91, yeah. I think it's about the same time. OP8, you want to consider that an album? No. That was 90... <laughs> I mean, it's just shit. OP8 is just forgettable. That was 91, 92. Yeah. 
same kind of time, mm. I suppose. Yeah, I mean, um, but I just don't think they ever really reached that peak again. I just oh, think yeah. that they, they got there and then that was it, that was their career. But if you go 13 times platinum, fine. You know, I mean... <laughs> you know, there's a difference between appreciating something from, from a general perspective and being a fan of a band. Okay, so I suppose everyone that, that likes rock music can, can appreciate this album. As for all the others, it comes down to being a fan of them and actually liking them and what they do. Mm. As for me, it's my case. But I can totally understand why a lot of people don't really get the, 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 the latter albums, you know. Mm. It's just fine, it's just that they, they, they went on the way they wanted to and some, it's just, it's like with Metallica, you know. They did what they wanted to do and some people I don't know. Stuck. Uh, I think Metallica did what they thought people wanted them to do. Yeah, no, whatever. Especially with what I mean is that. that got that, a review saying that. Yeah, by the way. but there's people, you know, that that said that that even the fucking Black album is shit. How can you say that the Black album is shit? If you're an idiot. It's an amazing album. Yeah. But most people were so attached to 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 the concept of of the band that they had before, that they just couldn't evolve with the band, for. For better or worse, you know what I mean? It's not up to you anyway to decide. Each band, they do what they want to do. Yeah, I think ultimately it comes down to something really simple. It comes down to passion and the way that, you know, the, your ability and the amount of everything and energy that you put into it and your ability to convey that, I think. And, and they just, they, they really nailed that, especially Eddie Vader. Yeah. On this album. Well, I think we're overdoing that point. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've made the point, we've made the point. Um, so that's it. We're going to now talk about something else. Yes, we did. So after uh, reviewing the footage that we've already uh, filmed this evening, we realised that we've got over an hour yeah. already, and so we're, we're going to save our other topics for another occasion. So there was a strip tease of me, but we're going to have to cut it. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're going to try to, to <laughs> put it into the... the the next step is always I think we'll have to put that on a different platform other yeah. than YouTube, but you know, yeah. we'll look into it. <laughs> so, from Isaurus, goodbye until the next vlog.